Hello everyone, I'm Harold White, a museum specialist here at the National Scouting Museum, and today we're going to talk about the Air Scout program of the Boy Scouts of America. As the BSA grew, it became clear that the need to address younger boys was being met by the Cub Scout program, which was established in 1930. And now the BSA turned its efforts to keeping older scouts engaged. So in 1935, the BSA launched the Senior Scout Division for boys 15 and older. The Senior Scout Division included several existing and new programs such as Sea Scouts, Exploring Scouts, Rover Scouts, Press Clubs, the Order of the Arrow, and a couple of others. In 1941, the Air Scout program was introduced as part of the Senior Scout Division. Much like the Sea Scouts are modeled after a Navy-based tradition, the Air Scouts were modeled after an Air Corps or Air Force-based influence and introduced scouts to the world of aeronautics. It was a pre-flight training program of sorts. Since World War II was ramping up in 1941, interest in aircraft and flight were growing, which helped make the program successful. The nuts and bolts of air scouting helped boys learn a great deal about flight, about how aircraft were built and operated, and they really learned to fly without actually taking to the air. Now these scouts learned about engines, radio communication, weather, and many other aviation-related topics. Of course, the Air Scouts benefited with close collaboration between the BSA and the Army Air Corps and Naval Aviation, particularly during the war years. The Air Scout uniform for both youth and adults were sky blue with patches in blues and grays to match. Much like the uniforms of the Boy Scouts and Cub Scouts, there were community and state strips as well as unit numbers. Now the only part of the Air Scout uniform in the NSM collection is this hat, which is currently on display in the main gallery. We would love to have a complete Air Scout uniform, so if you know someone who's willing to donate one, please let us know. Now, of course, advancement has always been a part of the scouting program, and the Air Scouts were no exception. For Air Scouts, there were really two advancement parts. The first was modeled after the Sea Scout program and had four levels, Apprentice, Observer, Craftsman, and Ace. Here at the NSM, we have several of these advancement patches on display in the main gallery. The second part of the advancement program was designed to help recruit younger scouts to the Air Scouts program. These were called the Air Candidate Awards and were designed for Tenderfoot, Second Class, and First Class scouts to earn while still in their troop. The hope being that by earning these, they would develop an interest in Air Scouts and join when they were old enough. These Candidate Awards were removed from the program in 1948. Now, early in the Air Scout program, the advancement requirements were very difficult. For example, the ACE Award, the highest award you could earn as an Air Scout, had 139 requirements. The first ACE Award wasn't even earned until 1945, nearly four years into the program's existence. As a result, in 1947, the requirements were revised with general Air Scout accomplishments being recognized by advancement in rank, and specialized aviation knowledge being recognized through a rating system. There was one place where both parts of the advancement scheme were shared and that was merit badges. With the introduction of the Air Scouts in 1941, the BSA broke the aviation merit badge into four separate merit badges. Aerodynamics, aeronautics, airplane design, and airplane structure. Earning these merit badges was required for both parts of the advancement program. In 1949, the BSA converted the Senior Scout program into the Explorer program, and as a result, the Air Scouts became Air Explorers. Now at first, the only thing that changed was their name, and the age dropped from 15 to 14 for membership. In 1953, they made some minor uniform changes, such as all BSA programs going to the familiar white letters on a red background for community and city strips, as well as unit numbers. Also, the air exploring rank was moved from above the left pocket to on the left pocket, bringing it more in line with the rest of the scouting's program. Also in 1953, the advancement program changed to a more common advancement structure throughout the Explorer program. However, the air explorer's requirements varied a little, including the requirement that air scouts had to earn the aviation rating. By 1955, the ACE Award was gone and Air Explorers were now working toward Bronze, Gold, and Silver Explorer Awards. In 1959, the Explorer program was renamed Exploring, but this had no impact on the Air Explorer program. And in 1965, the Explorer program, the Air Explorer program was officially dissolved and they became known as simply Aviation Exploring. 
Now, did you know that there's a tie between the earliest Air Scout program and Philmont Scout Ranch? On the night of April 22, 1942, seven U.S. Army Air Force airmen were flying a B-24D Liberator bomber preparing for war. These men were on a round-trip training mission between Albuquerque, New Mexico and Kansas City, Missouri. During the mission, they encountered several severe storms. On the return leg of the flight, their plane was caught in the downburst of a towering thunderstorm. In the night's darkness, the plane and crew slammed into the side of Trail Peak. There were no survivors. Now, the pilot of that aircraft was 2nd Lieutenant Roland L. Jeffries, an Eagle Scout from Kansas City. As a youth, Jeffries was a member of the Sky Scouts, a precursor to the Air Scouts. So when you come to Philmont, you can see the remains of their aircraft on the side of Trail Peak. It can be a moving experience. Now, if you know of any artifacts or uniforms related to the Air Scouts or Air Exploring programs that someone is willing to donate to the National Scouting Museum, please have them contact us. Outside of the few patches and the handbooks and the hat we showed you, we currently don't have much else in the collection. And we don't have much of the history of the program which is missing from our collection as well. Well, that's all we have time for this week. Join us next time as we continue to investigate and share the items and stories of the Boy Scouts of America. So long.